So here I am inside one of the cold chambers with Ryan. And Ryan, basically, this is normally chilled right down. You can see the huge fans there behind us. This is where we test those Arctic levels and things like that. What do we normally go down to in the cold chamber that we'll test an engine for? Yeah, normally we'll go down to minus 32 degrees Celsius, but we also have nodes at minus 18, minus 10 and, and zero degrees. Uh, we'll test their altitude conditions as well. Um, and as well as accommodating engines, we'll take in machines in this big chamber too. Well, that's fantastic, folks, because what we need to do is actually see, yes, the engine can work because we've tested it, but there are other components and things that need to work. And we'll also discover today, Ryan, because behind me there's a cold, cold chamber ready for me about fluids, and we'll come on to that once I've been in the cold chamber. So, Ryan, tell me about the temperatures I'm going to experience in the cold chamber. Maybe 18, 0, something like that? Yeah, just for you, we, we've pushed it past minus 32, so you're around minus 36. Today. Ryan, I've got my PPE on, but that is not going to suffice. One thing I have got, folks, is my content with media beanie with me. So I'm hopefully going to put that on because it's going to be freezing cold. It's about time I got some more gear on, Ryan, because minus 36 is certainly a very, very cold moment, isn't it? Absolutely. Right, so I'm off, folks, to get some more gear on. See you later. So now, folks, I'm in here at the center there's an engine over here to my right and there's two containers here one has a very milky liquid in it this is frozen this is normal diesel and we're going to have a look at that diesel later on that is actually at minus 36 is not going to work this is arctic zero uh, diesel this is basically minus 40 still see it's a complete liquid it is absolutely freezing in here, folks. There's even icicles on the window, which they're filming me through right now. This is fully frozen. This is still going. That's the Perkins difference with how they test their engines for people all over the world to be able to operate their machinery and equipment. Bye from me, folks. Too cold for me. So we're back here again with Ryan and outside of the cold chamber, minus 36 is not pleasant. But guess what? Minus 36 is also not pleasant on fluids. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this, folks, is I went onto the Perkins website and saw their fluids guide and it blew me away, really. There's so much going on. That's why you need to get the right thing. So, what is this? It's not ice cream. It's not anything that I would like to ever see again, quite frankly. It looks disgusting, Ryan. That has been in that cold chamber at minus 35. That, folks, should be this. This diesel, standard diesel, winter or summer grade. Why has it gone like this? What is it? So this is fuel that's waxed up. So Wax. this is waxed up. So this is fuel that um, is in a condition that is not designed chemically to be in. Um, ultimately, this is standard grade diesel fuel that's been at a teal point to minus 36 degrees and really is only suitable down to zero degrees um, summer grade type of conditions. Um, so it's waxed up yep. um, and, and ultimately to your point looking at our fuels guide um, we're guiding our, our customers to pick in the, the correct fuel uh, for the environment that their application is in. What's interesting folks is you saw before through the window I hope there was a filter there. Now, I'm sorry to say, Ryan, as many good your filters aren't going to filter that, are they? Correct, absolutely. So the filter is there is really to protect our fuel systems on, yeah. our, on our engines. Um, we can't have that type of fuel getting through to our, our fuel rail and certainly to our injectors. Your engine is just not going to run. It's not going to start. And importantly, in cold start development, we need to assess different grades of fuel um, within that development plan. So, so here in our cold chamber lab, we test at different temperatures, but yep. then also with different types of fuels um, and oils um, for that starting condition. So we can see here, folks, not to contaminate your fuel, but I'm gonna have to with my spoon, I'm afraid. This is Arctic diesel here, folks. Now, this is swimming as in normal. This is Arctic diesel at minus 35 degrees. And yes, here we are on the teaspoon. You can see it coming out there. This is Arctic diesel, therefore designed for a set purpose, isn't it? What can this go down to? Correct, yeah, so our Arctic packages include uh, selecting the right diesel, which you see here, as well as uh, the correct weight oils. 
Um, so yeah, this is, this is capable down to minus 32 degrees C as part of our cold node that we have to test to um, and that we do test to. So we would change our package of fuel for the application. Now, I've got some other uh, liquids here, uh, well, fluids here. What have we got here, the W30? Yeah, so 10W30 is standard factory fuel oil that right. our machines go out of the factory with. And that's kind of summer grade again, down to a good minus 10 degrees C. Um, but, but after those sort of temperatures, you really need to be chained into a lower weight, lower viscosity uh, oil, which is zero weight, as we see here. But you can see we tested the, the 10 weight into the minus 36 degrees as well. And guess what, folks? It's not looking pretty either. Look. Oh, it feels like it's some kind of honey. Look at that, folks. A honey that's going straight into your engine. That's not going to be good uh, for the engine either, is it, Ryan? Absolutely not. We can imagine people looking at running their equipment. You know, we've got climate change. This is what we're talking about again here today. Stage five engines, really, really tight injectors, making sure that we use that fuel correctly. If we're not got the right grade of fuel, the fuel won't even get through the filter to the engine. But equally, if we are not specifying fluids correctly, then actually we get a whole heap of other problems, don't we, when the temperature drops. Now we've seen temperature and climate issues happen all the time now with climate change and therefore we need to actually consider in the UK as well do we actually change what we're doing and specifying in winter conditions don't we? Absolutely it's really important to think of those requirements on, on the fuel and fluids guides that we provide to make sure we're selecting the right fluids for, for our application and importantly in the environment that they're in. Um, our development programs include thorough rigorous testing um, but ultimately, for optimal performance, we need to pick the right fluids. So folks, the message for me is, it might look like honey, but it's no good for the engine. It might look very much like a sorbet ice cream from a distance, but it certainly isn't when it's all waxed up. And Ryan, this is why it's so important to get cold at the Perkins Coal Facility, and people can come here and see it for themselves, can't they? Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic, it's worth it, but remember, bring your woolly hat and a very warm coat. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you.